Welcome to the Futures Lab. This is our digital workshop. In here we have a variety of digital um, computer driven machines. Over here we have a laser cutter. This is a laser cutter um, that is much bigger than the one we have in the workshop. It is twice the power and it'll be, most of these machines are technician run, so all you need to do is bring the file. We can cut all sorts of materials from plastics, plywoods, um, fabric, card, paper, um, including even engraving onto objects. Over here we have our Mamaki sublimation um, direct printing machine for printing onto textiles. So we're able to print onto cottons, polyesters and um, a whole lot more. It just produces JPEGs that can be um, printed at large scale on a five meter wide roll, about 50 meters long. So um, very sophisticated, very big piece of equipment. Um, over here we have our substrate cutter. This is for cutting textiles, leather, um, plies, anything that is a thin uh, flexible material can be cut on this machine. It has a vacuum bed for sucking the fabric or paper down so it won't move during the cutting process and everything is cut using a, a, a rotary wheel. On this machine it is a um, digital um, printer plotter cutter so we put in a a vinyl that is a plain colour and it will print any image onto the vinyl and then follow the profile of a vector doing the cutting pattern. So we can make labels, stickers, any kind of um, decals that could maybe enhance and um, make a project um, much more sophisticated. We have another vinyl cutter which is for um, cutting plain vinyls like the kind of thing you'll see on the signage we have in the workshop. Um, so making um, labels for galleries or, or making heat pr putting heat press vinyl on for making t-shirts, tote bags, anything like that. We also have five 3D printers. These two here are our FDM printers uh, which print in filament. Um, these are professional grade quality um, but very economical to use, uh, with low cost material but still producing high quality models. Over here we have a resin printer. These are our, our highest quality printer. The level of detail is extremely high and you can print in a variety of materials from grey, white, black, clear, flexible. Once the print has been made it will be taken over to these cleaning stations where it will be cleaned in alcohol and then exposed to a UV light to fully cure the model. This printer is a much larger version of the resin printer. So capable of producing much larger models, but still at a very high quality. Um, so a much larger bed and a much bigger build volume area. Finally, we have our um, SLS machine. This is a powdered nylon. It's, um, nylon powder is deposited in the hopper. It is then transferred onto the bed where it is then fused together with a laser. The laser will then um, fix all the material together, but keep building. Um, we have a build chamber full of powder with the models in. We take this build chamber out, we bring it over to our cleaning station where a cake of powder is removed and then transferred across here for cleaning, depowdering, where the rest of the powder is then put back into the hopper down here and recycled back into the machine. Finally, we have um, 3D scanning equipment. We have this desktop scanner for scanning um, small scale. Um, objects. These could be um, a, an object made by a student or an artefact or some kind of found object that can be then scanned in and digitized. We also have a handheld scanner for scanning larger objects like people um, or larger scale objects. Um, anything that then is scanned in can be digitized, manipulated within the computer, um, maybe even collaged together and then printed out in 3D on our 3D printers or made into a digital asset for virtual. So in the workshop, we have a metal working area where we have a plasma cutter, um, welding bench, MIG welder, and a spot welder. So all forms of um, metal joining, so we can be making um, small pieces or large structural work um, to large scale sculpture. Over here we've got a 
new laser cutter for cutting steel and stainless steel. So we can cut out any kind of shape we want. The pieces can be taken out of here, they can be bent or rolled or folded, and then continue to be worked with in the metal working area to um, make either component parts or larger scale st structures using the same equipment. We have two workbenches um, which are bookable, so you can book the workbench um, to work on your own or as a group. Um, when you book a bench, you have access to all the equipment within this workshop. Over here we have a metal band saw, pillar drill, sanding equipment, as well as a whole variety of hand tools that are all for use when booking a workbench. There's a whole array of clamps for working, building stretchers. We also have cordless tools, um, which can be used within the workshop or be booked out to take back to the studios to um, continue working with or if you need to hang some work. Over here we have a, another laser cutter. This is our open access one, so students who are trained can come here and, and just book this machine to use on their own. Here we've got the technical office where myself and Katie are based and through the back we have um, our storeroom where we keep materials that can be bought on the website as well as um, larger cutting equipment that are for technicians only but so we can cut and prepare materials um, on order. Hi there, uh, welcome to the Annex. Um, students can book spaces in here to work with clay and you can also work with plaster in this room here. Um, through in this room we have three kilns, so we've got two larger ones and then one smaller one behind the door. We've also got a fan oven which can be quite useful as well for drying things out and melting flat sheets of plastic so they're going to be um, able to be formed into different shapes and things. Uh, the kilns are normally fired at least once a week, um, so your work will be moving through the process as fast as we can. Um, you can see on the shelves here, we've got some students' work that is moving gradually through the process. So the stuff that you see on here is at different stages. Um, over here, we've got two potter's wheels. So if you're interested in throwing on the wheel, you can book those. Um, and we're more than happy to guide you through that process if that is something that you would like to learn. We've got all of the tools that you need for working with clay, um, but if you have your own tools, you're more than welcome to bring those. Uh, over here, you can see that we've got this wet back glaze spray booth. Um, so that's really good for applying glaze or slip. Um, to get a good coverage on maybe larger items that you might have made. Um, and then in this cupboard, you can see that we've got um, a range of different slips, oxides, underglazes and glazes in there for you to decorate the surface of your ceramic work. Um, we've also got this area in the corner which can be used for working with plaster so you can make moulds and things for uh, clay pieces that you might be making or you maybe want to work with plaster just by itself more sculpturally. Um, at the back of this room you can see that we've got two, uh, these are two empty rooms, they're called installation spaces and students can book those out for a couple of days and you'll be able to set up an installation in there and it'll be undisturbed and untouched by anyone else. Um, so they're quite handy if you've got to set up a larger, larger piece. Um, in the annex as well, you will have weekend access and evening access to here. Um, so this is a space where you can work on a little bit later. Um, here we've got an uh, air bench so you can sand things on here and it means that you're not going to be breathing any of that dust in so that's going to be taking all of that dust out of the atmosphere that you're working in. And then over in this room, um, this is a spray room. 
So you can spray aerosols in here um, and then you can see on the back it's got this huge extraction unit so you're not going to be breathing any of those fumes in that you're using in this room. This is the Ruskin Gallery. It's in the very heart of the Cambridge School of Art. It's surrounded by both uh, fine art and illustration studios uh, and it's now home to our Future Lab. The Ruskin Gallery hosts both professional and student exhibitions throughout the year and at the end of the year when we get to the graduate degree shows the entire gallery becomes one large exhibition space. So this is one of our fine art studios that leads directly from the Ruskin Gallery. Uh, it's a collaborative space which is used by all the students. Uh, every student gets their own desk space and they can do with that space whatever they like. So I'll take you into the studio now. So as you can see from behind me, uh, each student gets their own area to work on their projects. They can move a desk in and work on smaller projects or if they prefer to work larger, can set up their own canvases. Um, or even bigger size work. Directly opposite the studio is the Futures Lab, uh, which every student has complete access to. Uh, and every student from any creative course in the Cambridge School of Art has access to all of our facilities, such as printmaking, uh, the 3D workshop, the ceramics workshop and annex space, um, and also access to media services, which covers any lighting, camera and film This is the third year illustration studio. Uh, all the illustration studios used to be painting studios, so they're all south facing. So the windows always bring in a lot of light and these studios are always very warm, airy uh, and have a lot of plant life around. Uh, the balcony above me is where Pink Floyd had their first ever concert, which is something that everyone's quite proud of. Um, all the illustration studios are in the same corridor and each student gets their own desk space, which they can use as they wish and uh, they're really nice spaces and we all feel like uh, a little community.